Welcome back to DesignSmith. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a really cool blur text effect in Illustrator and Photoshop. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so we're gonna start here in Illustrator and we're going to lay down our text first. And I'm gonna type out the word ghost because it's gonna be kind of like a ghosty, wispy effect. Now I'm not gonna worry about kerning because we're gonna break apart the individual letters. So we're gonna go up here to type and create outlines. And now we're gonna go to object and ungroup. We want each one of these letters to be selectable by themselves. And we're gonna arrange them in different rotations here. All right, now that we've got the arrangement, I'm gonna go over here and just enlarge everything and pull this right up here. And I'm gonna select every other letter and that's gonna have its own color. I'll do like a green color and then a light purple color. All right, now I'm gonna select everything and group it together. Now let's align it to our artboard. And over here in our toolbar, we're gonna click and hold down on the whip tool and we're gonna go to the pucker tool. And let's double click on this and I'm gonna set the width to eight inches, the intensity to 5% and we're gonna leave the detail at two and simplify at 50 and then hit okay. And now we're gonna click very quickly on the different parts of these letters. And it's gonna distort the letters and give it this ghost type of feel. All right, now I'm gonna go up here to object and ungroup and just kind of move things around a little bit differently. I wanna finalize my placement before we bring it over into Photoshop. I like the idea of having some of them really, really distorted here. All right, so now we're gonna select everything, group it together, center it into our artboard. And now let's go over here and enlarge it all the way up and then take it down maybe four inches. All right, so now I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna hit copy, and I've set up a document in Photoshop of 18 by 24 at 300 resolution. And we're gonna hit paste, and paste as a smart object, and hit okay. We don't have to worry about sizing because we set the sizing in Illustrator. Then we'll hit enter to commit those changes. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add a background color, and we're just gonna add black. And let's go ahead and name our layer like a good designer. And now I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and we'll just name it Ghost 1 and Ghost 2. And we're gonna go right up here to filter, Blur Gallery, and Path Blur. If you've never used Path Blur before, this is where you can designate a path and the blur will actually follow that path. It's very easy to use, just grab your little endpoints here. It works kind of like the Curves tool in Illustrator. So just grab these little points right here and you can just keep adding points. And what I'm wanting it to do is just kind of follow the movement of the letters that we've established here. I'll just move this one to where it kind of goes through that letter. And let's increase the speed to about 150%, and you can start to see those little blurs happening there. I think I may increase it to 200, yeah, that looks better. And right here at the taper, I'm gonna leave it relatively low, maybe around 10%. The higher you go with it, the more that blur starts to fade. And for now, I'm gonna leave centered blur checked. And let's hit okay. All right, and now we're gonna go up here to ghost two, and we're gonna go back to the blur gallery and go back to path blur. So now what I wanna do is do something a little bit different in our arrangement. I wanna make this a little bit more random. So it's kinda of like a, maybe like a question mark or something like that. Cause we're gonna bring the speed up to about 300 and we're gonna uncheck centered blur to make it even more intense. And now we'll click okay. And now we wanna move this layer to the bottom and we'll change the blending mode from normal to hard light and we'll lower the opacity to 50%. And now I'm gonna add a slight stroke on this top layer. So let's double click on the layer, go over here to stroke, and I'm gonna leave the position set to outside, and we'll set the size to 20 pixels, and we'll drop the opacity down to 50%. This just helps give it a little bit more dimension. All right, and now let's add a new layer, and we'll call this grain. I'm gonna hit shift and delete on my keyboard, and we're gonna fill this with 50% gray, and hit okay. And now go up here to filter, Camera Raw Filter. We're gonna crank up the grain and the size both to 100. We'll leave the roughness at 50 and hit okay. And change the blending mode of the grain to overlay. So we've got this really cool grainy effect going on here. Now, once you're finished, let's say you wanted to go back and edit these colors. Well, there's two different ways you can do that. The first way is double clicking on this thumbnail. And because we pasted it as a smart object earlier, we can use the direct select tool to select the green colors here. I'm gonna change it to like a blue and then we'll do the same thing with purple double click on it and change it to like an orange. Go up here to file and save. And when we go back to Photoshop, it'll work on updating those colors for us. And because the top layer is a duplicate of the bottom layer, then they both will get updated. All right, and the second way to change those colors is to make sure that you are at least on top of both of the layers here. And we're gonna click on our adjustment layers 
and click on hue and saturation. And you can universally change the colors by sliding the hue bar right here, or you can directly target the cyans here, and then the yellows here. And you can just keep adjusting until you get the colors that you're looking for. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope I taught you something in Photoshop or Illustrator today. Please leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.